Hello everyone. Today we will learn a new lecture, Etherchunk, iStack, and CSS. In today's lecture, we will talk about the following contents. First, we will talk about network reliability requirements, and then we will give the principle and configuration of link aggregation. And finally, is the overview of iStack and CSS. So first, let's look at the requirement of the network reliability. Actually, in network, the performance requirement includes the network throughput, network delay, and also the network reliability. Actually, network reliability refers to the capability of ensuring non-stop network service when a single point or multi-point of failure occur on the device or link. So it means that we don't know at which time there may be some single point failure or multi-point failure, but to uh, maintain the network reliability, we need the network to be quickly recovered from such single point failure or multi point failure. So that is the network reliability. And network reliability actually can be implemented at the card level, the inter network interface card, or the device level. It can be implemented in the switch or routers or at the link level. So if there are a link failure, we can use some method to recover the link connection. So you can see that, for example, if there are a link, a fault, then if we provide one more switch and provide one more access link, then if this link failure happens, then we can quickly use this switch to as the backup of this switch and this link as a backup of this link, then the traffic can quickly switch to this route to uh, transmit. So the re network reliability can be guaranteed. To enhance the network reliability, we can implement it in the card level. So here is the explanation for card reliability. Actually, a modular switch uh, here is a modular switch, and this switch can provide the reliability. So you can see that a modular switch consists of a chases. The chases provide the slot, different slot for various cards and modules to implement intercard communication. And it also includes the power module. This is the power module. They will provide the power supply for the system and the device. And they also include the fan modules. So uh, here are the fan modules. Okay, They can do the heat dissipation. And also there are some main processing units. The main processing unit is responsible for the control plane and management plane of the entire system. They will manage and control the other um, devices, the other modules operation. And we also have several a SFU, the switch fabric unit. Uh, that means this switch fabric can doing the forwarding and switch between multiple interfaces. And um, it is responsible for the data plane of the entire system. So the data plane provides high-speed non-blocking data channels for data switching uh, between service modules. So this uh, module actually can forward data from one module to other modules. And then it also includes the line processing unit. So the line processing unit actually provide data forwarding function on the physical device and provide optical and electrical interfaces for different rates. So this line processing unit will be connected with a real physical interface by a cable. Then it can really do the data forwarding. And that is the architecture of a modular switch. So you can see that they have multiple MPU, multiple line processing unit, and multiple SFUs, a switch fabric unit. So actually, they provide certain reliability. When one 
slot, one module fails, the other modules can work as well. So if we look at the cart reliability in details, you can see that here, the multiple MPU, if there is one MPU has failure, then it doesn't affect the normal operation of the control platform because uh, the other MPUs can still work to do the control and management. And if we look at the switch fabric unit, uh, it is similar. So if some switch fabric unit are faulty, the data plane can still forward data properly using the other still working SFUs. And for line processing unit, actually one line processing unit is corresponding to one line. So if one LPU is faulty, the interface on this LPU will be affected, but the line, the interfaces on the other LPUs will not be affected. So actually you can see that here by providing multiple MPU, SFU and LPU, actually the card reliability can be achieved. Okay, that is the reliability in terms of the card level. If we look at the reliability at the device level, actually you can see that we can use backup to achieve reliability. So this is an example with without backup. So there are several hosts connected through the access switch and to the aggregation switch and finally to the internet. So if there are a device fault happens, then the aggregation switch cannot provide service. So all the downstream switch and downstream PCs will be disconnected. However, to solve this problem, we can use this master backup mode. So we can add one more aggregation switch and add one more access link. Uh, if this device has some fault, the root port will be disabled and they will select this alternative part to transmit the packet. So the packet can go from this path into the network by using this uh, spanning tree protocol. So in that case, this one can work as a backup device as for this device. So by using this master backup mode, we can achieve this device reliability. The reliability can be also provided in the level of link. So here, originally there is only one link connected between this access switch and aggregation switch. However, if we want to provide more redundancy to back to solve to enhance the link reliability, actually we can add one more link as the backup link. And this link is blocked by STP if the main link works well. However, if the main link has some failure, then the backup link can automatically uh, work and this link can be recovered. So the connection can be maintained and link reliability can be achieved. So these are the uh, methods to achieve link reliability.